Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to another all-new edition of Geek to Me Radio. We are live at Planet Comic Con 2018. My guests are Maurice LaMarche from Animaniacs, Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman, Rick Burchett, artist extraordinaire from DC Comics, Funky Winker Bean, and Pirates of the Ineffable Ether. All that and more, stand by. We're talking TV, comics and movies, and video games. Star Wars, we'll try to explain. There are two doctors, one with houses, one ring rolls and more. To be the greatest, Pokemon Master, you must catch them all. You must catch them all. Try to catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. If you're driving around St. Louis right now listening to us live on 105.3 FM and 1380 AM, thank you very much for tuning in today. If you are hearing this via the web, World Wide Web, we're here in Kansas City. It's being broadcast from St. Louis, but it's also available anywhere the World Wide Web finds you. And of course, after the fact, on SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, and Podomatic. We are live today. I'm going to try to keep my, uh, my lunch down because I'm very nervous. We've got Maurice LaMarche, Kevin Conroy, Rick Burchett. We are going to be talking just about everything geek for the day. Gentlemen, I can't thank you all three enough for coming down here. It's, our, it's, our, it's my fact. I'm, I'm feeling tremendously honored <laughs> to be here. I was going to say it's our pleasure as though the group was elected to be spokesman. Really? It's your yeah. spokesman. Yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're on the island, and I've become the... I'm carrying the <laughs> stick. <laughs> Perfect. It's great to be here. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, so I think I've had all of you on the show before except Maurice. It's my first time. And I was, I was very excited because I, mes- I messaged you. I'll, I'll show you the message on Twitter back in August to say, hey, we'd love to have you on sometime if you're able to do it. I never heard anything back. I'm like, I hope I'm he's not mad at me. I'm with my direct messages. Okay. I'm terrible with my I thought I did so intimidated to, you. to go in there because there's so many of them. And I'm like, I don't know. Do I know these people? So I get a little, I get a little intimidated on that. I'm not great on keeping up. No, that's fine. And then I approached your booth, and you said, well, why have you had Andrea Romano? Why have you had Phil Lamar? Why have you had Rob Paulson, not me? And I was I like, no, no, I, come, I, come. I, I was quite so accusatory. I said, <laughs> I've heard of you, and I, I see you've had all my friends on the show, especially Andrea Romano, who was very nice in what she said about me, because I've, I, I always felt like I was a little bit, uh, uh, I don't know, my, my ego was a little out of control back in the 90s, and I thought, well, I'm the brain, and I know how the brain should talk. And I gave her a little... Couple of rough, there were a couple of rough edges there where I just said, I think the, the brain would say it like this. And, you know, I, I labeled myself a pain in the ass. And then Andre has been very <laughs> kind in public uh, interviews to say that she enjoyed working with me. And we've, we are good friends now. But a couple of times we butted heads because I was a dick. <laughs> I'm You're jo- not jo- a dick. You're Joey's, a Joey's back at the station right now. I've got to edit that out. I've got to edit that. Hopefully he's hitting the dump button so we don't, that's fine. But that's fine. This is the part of the joys of live radio. Kevin, you worked with Andrea extensively, and I last ran into you at the big JL reunion. We were only missing Carl Lumley. So were you also a, a pain in her tuchus? No. no. I'm the easiest guy in the world to work with, I think. No. Andrea, Andrea... The wonderful thing about Andrea is that she has a stable of actors she draws on that are all really wonderful people, genuinely wonderful people that you would want to have a meal with. You know, they're just generous, like working with Mark Hamill or Maurice. The greatest guy. I mean, these are just wonderful actors. Carl Lumley. Yeah. Um, she's she's got this group that she loves to work with, and they're. You know, actors are people. There are, there are generous ones, selfish ones, kind ones, mean ones. You know, there are ones you want to have a meal with and ones you want to run away from. <laughs> she has a way of surrounding herself with the most generous, giving, fun people. You just get in a booth. Be in a booth with Mark Hamill. I wish the audience could see what it's like because he's, he's like a 12-year-old. You know, he, he just, is. He's so animated. He's His the face. most... He's the most enthusiastic he's, animation he loves, fan in the world. Yeah, he loves it so much, and he gives you so much to work yeah, with. Yeah, he's you know, great. He, he, he makes your life so so easy. So it's a joy. So that and Andrea is the one who picks all these actors yeah. and brings all these people together. 
And, and I, I'm focusing, I'm not ignoring Rick, who's at the end. Hello, Rick, you're way at the end there. Hello. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I know Kevin and Maurice have to head off to photo ops and everything, so I don't want to keep you too, more past your time than you've already given me. But uh, you both worked together in uh, the, under, or the, the Arkham projects. Uh, Maurice was Mr. Freeze. Uh, you were obviously Batman. And so what, uh, doing a video game, it's a much different process, obviously, than doing a live animated feature. Doing a video game, I, I equate it to, like, to having root canal. It's, that bad. It is painful. <laughs> it is painful. Because when you're doing a live action show, especially for Warner Brothers, they like to get all the actors in the studio together. So you do a half an hour show in about two hours. And you work together like a radio play. And you have the other actors to work off of. And there's a wonderful ambiance in there. And they give, you give each other energy. Um, there's a real dynamic quality to the room. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Games, they need completely clean takes hmm. because of the way it goes into post-production, the way it's built. So you're alone in a booth for four hours at a time doing line after line after line after line. Okay, now do a little irony, line after line. Keep the irony. Can we have a smile? Line after line. I'm not kidding. And after four hours, you, you can't find you talking like this. You, you're not speaking English anymore. That's true. And then you get an hour for lunch, and then you do four hours more. And that goes on for a week. And then you may have a week off while they're writing more stuff. But Arkham Knight, the last of the Arkham series, had 37,000 lines. In wow. It, to it took me that long to beat the game, 37,000 exactly. hours, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. Well, because of the different ways, and, you know, depending on how it's played, all those things have to be recorded. And it took two years to build. Mm. So it's no fun. It's not a fun process to make it. But then when it's done and you look and you see what you're a part of, you're so proud of it, you know? I'm very proud of that performance. And my camera guy, Bob, uh, did not realize that Maurice did Mr. Freeze. He was blown away when he saw the picture. So could you guys do a real quick little Batman versus Mr. Freeze for us? No. All right. <laughs> we won't. i sorry, Bob. We I can't tried. do that, right, Batman? It's against our contracts. We could get frozen out. You've got to forget about Nora. She's gone. Give her up. There we go. Perfect. Thank oh, you so much. That's awesome. I got chills. Improv. And Rick is going to be drawing this the entire time. He's going to have a sketch yeah, right at yeah, the end. I so know. he'll have <laughs> Batman versus Mr. Freeze. Freeze. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's cool. Perfect. Do you, are you a gamer, Rick? Do you, no. No? Are you kidding? I could break a shovel. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, mechanical things. Are, now my boys are. My sons are. But I... <laughs> I'd like to have more time to game, personally. I wish I could. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. So we've got, uh, I, again, I want to keep either of you too long. Um, with Maurice, uh, I, was, I was reading over your bio, and I, doing stand-up and opening for people like Dangerfield and uh, for George Carlin, what was kind of experience going from that into voiceover? That's almost a 180? Well, my act was all impressions anyway, so it, I, I saw it as a preparation. And in fact, my act was my introduction to voiceover because one night... In 1983, a voiceover agent was in the audience and said, with all those impressions you do, I'd like to send you out on auditions for cartoons. Just have to marry different characters together and come up with original characters. So I started going out on auditions. It took me a year but until I got my first cartoon, but you know, she had wow. faith in me. And so I didn't like take a workshop or anything like that, but I had 10 years of experience working with audiences, kind of knowing what was funny and what was working. and and you know, making my voice go a million different places. So mm -hmm. that was that was that was uh, actually a wonderful intro for me, and uh, uh, I'm I'm very lucky to have fallen sideways into voiceover. I think I think most people do fall sideways into voiceover. There are so many different ways to get into it. Like that way, you did it through stand up right. and coming up with the characters. I did it through theater, and I studied Shakespeare and the Greeks at Juilliard. I was going to be a classic actor. And I worked for Joe Papp at the Public and did Broadway and Off-Broadway. And, uh, I, 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 when Batman was the first animated character I auditioned for. Hmm. It was the first animated audition I had. And I didn't even know much about Batman. I just knew the Adam West show. And Bruce Tim is explaining to me, he said, no, 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 forget about the Adam West show. This is, you know, dark, it's noir. His parents were killed as a child. He's avenging their deaths. He's, he's you know, he's, he's a shadowy, dark character. And I said, well... You're kind of telling the Hamlet story. This is I was putting it in, in in relation to what my background was, which was in in Shakespeare. And he said, "Well, no one's made that analogy before." 
So I just put myself into, you know, this dark, a very dark place um, to come up with the sound and approached it as a classic, uh, tragic character, which is what he is. You know, he's, he's Orestes, he's, he's Hamlet, he's, he's our culture's version of those great mythological tragic heroes. And they had that great episode of Batman the Animated Series where you fight Maxi Zeus, and as they're leading him through Arkham Asylum, he's seeing Poison Ivy and say, oh, it's Demitar. You know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, see, yeah. That was a great yeah, uh, nod yeah, to Shakespeare as well. Yeah, yeah. So with, uh, with, when you guys get to collaborate, I, I love to think of all you voice actors, uh, who, who I'm uh, such a huge fan of voice actors, all getting together for dinner every so often. You guys all hang out. You're not, don't spoil the image. You guys have tea like every, uh, every Saturday, don't you? You know what's funny is that when we get to go on these things, when we come to a con like this, we do, you know, we're, we're all each we other. We do hang out. And we do hang out. We do go for dinner. We meet for breakfast in the coffee shop. So this is that. And we, we have a great and time. And probably the thing we talk about least is voiceover. We probably just, we, instead we tell jokes. We try to crack each other up. We, you know, last night, um, uh, uh, Kari Payton was kind of messing with the, um, messing with the manager of the restaurant because they run out of the pulled, the pulled pork. You know, it's like, how, how, can you, how can you be a barbecue restaurant and run out of cold <laughs> pork? But, you know, and so it, even then we do the voices and everything. We try to make the people around us laugh. But, yeah, so it is. It's a wonderful time for us, these cons, to socialize with each other that we don't get to do in our own hometown. Yeah. You know? And we're going to take our first commercial break right now. This segment has been brought to you by Popcorn Buddha. 85 different flavors of popcorn on their website, popcornbuddhausa.com. If you're listening right now, if you want to buy some popcorn, enter the coupon code GEEK during checkout. They'll take 15% off of your subtotal. We're going to sample some flavors. I've got uh, flavors of Dark Knight chocolate popcorn for all of our guests here on stage. Yes. We're going to give some prizes to the audience during this commercial break. We'll be right back on Geek Me Radio. <laughs> 